Let's move on to another exciting trial targeted against patients with EGFR activating mutations in non-small cell lung cancer. So this was the highly anticipated Lux Lung 3 trial presented by Dr. Yang. A fatinib is very similar to erlotinib and gefitinib, except that it additionally inhibits other members of the ERB-B family, and it's irreversible as opposed to erlotinib and gefitinib, which are reversible EGFR-specific inhibitors. Similarly to the other agents, it's orally available. It does seem to have some preclinical activity against the T790M mutation, although in clinical trials so far of patients who have acquired resistance, it doesn't seem to be particularly active by itself. There are promising signs of activity in combination with another EGFR antibody, cetuximab. The study design here was patients with treatment-naive stage 3 wet or stage 4 lung cancer randomized in a 2-to-1 fashion to either a fatinib 40 milligrams a day or cisplatin and pemetrexid chemotherapy first line. Patients had to have an EGFR mutation, most commonly the exon 19 or LA58R exon 21 mutation, but could have other sensitizing mutations to go on to this clinical trial. And the primary endpoint was progression-free survival. The objective response rates were impressive, as impressive as we've seen from other first-line EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor clinical trials like IPASS, Optimal, Burotac, and were 56 to 69 percent. Investigator assessed was slightly higher than independent review, and out of the patients with tumors harboring the most common EGFR mutations, which were exon 19 deletions and LA58R, these are the classic sensitizing mutations, the response rates were modestly higher than this. This is compared to chemotherapy response rates, which I think are equivalent to what's been noted historically for these agents in the 20 to 40% range. Progression-free survival was impressive as well at 11.1 months median progression-free survival for afatinib versus seven months for cisplatin and pemetrexid. These curves do separate with a hazard ratio of 0.58 and a p-value that's highly significant. This is very similar, once again, to what we see in the other first-line clinical trials of erlotinib, such as Yurtac or Optimal. For the patients with common mutations, once again, the curves separate nicely, and there's no discrepancy here with the prior slide. What we did not see at ASCO, but we're hoping to see at some point, is overall survival data, because these patients, unlike prior trials involving first-line EGFR TKI, weren't allowed to cross over to the afatinib arm. However, they probably could have access to gefitinib and erlotinib, so there may well be no overall survival difference. The most frequent adverse events did look very common, diarrhea, rash, mucositis, dry skin, very similar to EGFR TKIs alone, but these look somewhat more severe and more common than we would expect from erlotinib or gefitinib. Cisplatin and pemetrexid had the host of side effects that we normally expect as well. But most patients got toxicity. Virtually all got some sort of toxicity on afatinib. So my conclusions from this are that afatinib does appear better than chemotherapy in the first-line treatment of EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer, similarly to erlotinib and gefitinib. The progression-free survival of 13.6 months among selected patients with either the exon 19 or the L858R does appear somewhat better than erlotinib or gefitinib, but the rash and the diarrhea are worse than with the other EGFR TKIs. So I think that patients pay the price for the improvement in progression-free survival. The overall survival data are hopefully coming up in not too long. Also, we're eagerly anticipating the Lux Lung 7, which is head-to-head comparison of afatinib versus gefitinib. So we'll see whether this agent is indeed better and compare the toxicities directly. Thanks for listening. If you like and learn from our Grace Cast, you can subscribe on iTunes by just searching for the term Cancer Grace, find podcasts in the subject you want, pick a format of audio or video, and then just click subscribe. It's that easy. And for those of you who don't want to miss any of our programs, there's even a feed for all subjects. You can also find us on YouTube at Grace for Cancer Info. And that's the number four in one word, Grace for Cancer Info. Finally, if you haven't been there yet, please check out our Grace website at www.cancergrace.org. And don't forget that donate button in the upper right. Our content, which helps tens of thousands of cancer patients around the world every month, is made possible by your support. Thanks again.